Hello everybody and welcome to another shader graph tutorial. In this one we are going to look at this effect and how to create it using shader graph and a Unity's particle system. And uh, as you can see, um, the effect is that the each piece would um, scale down, it will rotate, and the it will have emission as well as a random position. So if you don't mind hitting that like button for the algorithm and subscribe if you are not yet subscribed so you don't miss uh, my other tutorials. So let's just jump into it and um, let me show you the setup first. So we have two cameras, the main one, the normal one, which um, doesn't really render everything in the culling mask. It doesn't render the water, but you can call whatever, you can create whatever layer you want and put it in that layer, but I just used this one, right? Which will have our particles, right? So this camera, the main camera, is not going to render our par particles, which are uh, in the water layer. And there is a separate camera. Uh, the transform has to be like this, um, so that it's the same as the first camera, right? And whenever you move the, the first one, it will uh, be aligned with the second, basically. And obviously the second one is going to only render the particles. And it's going to be rendering to um, a render texture. I call it particles. And the, the make sure that the dimensions of this texture are, well, the ratio between X and Y are the same as the ratio of your uh, resolution. And if you uh, have a dynamic resolution, so uh, something that changes based on the, the screen that you are running on, then you will have to write a script that um, recreate the render, uh, the texture render um, on the fly, basically. Um, but as you can see, you don't need to do the full resolution. Like the uh, the aspect ratio, for example, that I'm using is uh, 1920 by 1080. And I just divided by, I think, 8, which I ended up with th these numbers. All right, so we have our particles in this guy, in this texture. And our shader is going to consume this texture to know which pieces should have the effect on them, right? Now, this particle system obviously is on the water layer so that it only shows up for this camera. Now in your uh, scene window, you are going to see everything, which is why you see all these particles, right? So let's just jump into the shader then. And I called it scale down. Whoops. It's full on zoom. All right, so our first part is um, getting the position of each object in screen space. And what I did to get this stuff I, I don't understand it completely, but I'm, I'm going to try to, to uh, describe it a little bit, a little bit, is that you can um, create any of the nodes, right? So I used the screen position, which is basically transforming the vertex position into screen space. And any node, you can right click on it and show generated code. And thus, um, you can see the code generated. And if you scroll down, you will see this is part of it. And the other part is here, where it gets uh, transform to world, right? And then transform world to clip. And then that is, uh, uh, sorry, here. Uh, get a world matrix. So this is going to transform uh, from object to world, and then from world to clip, 
and then using this compute screen position function uh, to uh, to change it to screen position, right? And you can see it's kind of the same thing here. Uh, I am getting it instead of the vertex position, I want the object position. And the uh, whenever you want to multiply by a transformation matrix, then it has to be vector four, and the W has to be uh, of value one. And uh, so this is going to be, this is the view projection, which is, uh, if I understand correctly, is the same as from world to clip space. And then after that, I am feeding it to this custom function, which is, again, the same thing. It's compute screen position function. Uh, and it takes uh, this, the x of this projection params, which is basically the near plane. And then you have to divide both x and y on the w which will end up um, with our correct values, basically. And um, yeah, so this is, this is the, uh, the position of each object in screen space, which means if the object is in this corner, for example, then it it's going to be 0, 0. And if it is on this corner here, it's going to be 1, 1. And in between, it's going to be half, half. So we are going to use the position in screen space of the object to sample our render texture, the particles basically, right? And I am using the LOD sampler. So uh, I think the normal one does not allow you to use the value in the uh, position output at the end. So, um, and I also have uh, three, the value three, four LOD. Uh, you can play with that to see what, what's the difference, but this will make the texture kind of blurry. And then I have this uh, branch, which uh, uses a Boolean parameter reverse, which can reverse uh, the effect. Um, meaning, if you go back here, and if you select on this material, and click on reverse, everything will disappear. And I have a separate particle system for the reverse effect. And as you can see here, it will, uh, like it's the reverse of that effect basically, right? Wherever you go, wherever there are particles, then the pieces are going to appear. Otherwise, everything uh, is not there. And the difference is um, in the, the particle system, I have uh, another particle system which spawns uh, over time, right? Instead of the other one which uh, spawns over distance, which means when you move it. Um, and there are some changes in the, the color over lifetime. And the color over lifetime is what defines the fade in and fade out of each uh, uh, piece, basically, right? Obviously, you have to change, um, you have to create your own uh, particle material, and it's using the uh, universal render pipeline particles unlit. Um, it's additive, transparent, additive, and I'm using this default uh, texture that uh, ships with Unity. Um, yeah, and for the other one, it's um, this sharp circle for the one that you are uh, staying in your place, right? You can try with different textures and whatnot, but yeah. So going back here, you can see that the reverse is going to give us one minus our value from the uh, render texture, while the normal way is the normal value, right? Now this value is going to be used for uh, a couple of things. The easier one is uh, lurping between for the emission, lurping between zero, or um, yeah, lurping between zero and the color, multiplied by five so that it uh, glows more. And the albedo is just the color, and color is a parameter that we have here. So that's the first part. The second part is the random position, and I am using this uh, subgraph. Vic3 random, which I created. 
and uh, let me show you how it looks like save it takes a seed and it takes minimum and maximum the seed is uh, a vector 3 and um, I just add up all the uh, elements of that vector 3 and then I use that as the seed of random range and seed plus whatever number you want so that it's a different seed for the second one and another one for the third one right and I just use the parameters of min max for the min max for all of them and then I combine them to a vector 3 and output them right so it's uh, it's just a subgraph that um, allows me to create vector 3 randoms easily and so what I'm doing here is that I am getting the uh, position of the object again not the uh, vertex not, not the vertices and uh, adding some random number just to have a different seed from the other places that I'm using this and I am using the position offset uh, as the maximum and the negative of that as the minimum and then um, I'm adding this value to the uh, uh, to this height basically right so it's it's um, one on the y so that's a vector which goes just to the top and then I am transforming that from a world object because y is up is in a world object uh, scenario right I'm transforming that to object uh, space and then I multiply this vector by the height uh, parameter and then I'm adding both of these which are the random positioning and going up the basically the height right you add up both of these and then you add these two to um, uh, this other stuff which are basically um, the rotation as well as uh, or, or actually it's, it's the, uh, the vector from the uh, from each vertex to the center so let me let me come back here uh, and then this will make sense the here. random rotation I have another um, vector 3 not random which is for the axis uh, the axis on which uh, the, the vertices are gonna rotate about and uh, you can give it a uh, minimum of minus one maximum of one and normalize it because it's just a direction right um, and again the seed is uh, the position of the object plus whatever random value you give it uh, and that's our axis and the amount of rotation is the value from the render texture multiplied by a random value right uh, which means that each object is again going to have a different uh, rotation and then to transition that rotation to have it like rotate in real time uh, I am multiplying the value of the particle which is between 0 and 1 by the random rotation for this object right and then connecting it to rotation and I'm using degrees you can use uh, radians if you would like and then the input whatever we want to rotate is the position of uh, the vertices basically the vertex position right so that it rotates this will result in rotation in its uh, in its place basically right now out of this rotation we can construct a vector in which if we add it uh, to this rotated object it will scale down to the center so what I'm doing is that I'm getting the position of the object which is the center transforming it from world to object space and then if you subtract it by the object in, uh, in the, the position in object space right this is going to give us vic a vector such that if you add it to uh, this stuff it will be scaled down to the center right and so uh, this is what I'm doing here basically I am lurping between this vector and nothing zero 
using again the same um, the the value of the uh, render texture, right? And so this is going to result in a vector that if this is one and we add it to this, we are going to scale to nothing, right? It's going to disappear. And if it is zero, we will have the original scale, right? So we are just adding these two to have the scale effect. And then uh, just connect it to the vertex position, right? Let me just go through the uh, parameters just to show you uh, the difference. And obviously, this doesn't work, again, in the uh, scene view. You will have this effect because the render texture is being unwrapped um, based on the viewport, right? Anyways, so let's remove the reverse and disable this guy. Enable this guy instead. And do play do some of this stuff, pose, and now if we change the maximum rotation, you can see what's going on. You can change the position offset, which is how random of a position to add. You can also change the end height right and you can obviously change the color too and um, yeah that's it for uh, this tutorial thank you so much for watching and hope you like it and uh, smashed that like button already if you didn't and uh, have a nice one